guys and gals. I'm so glad you guys are here at RPK Online. This month, we're talking about something really important. It's a huge part of following Jesus, compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. All month, we've talked about Jesus, and we've seen how Jesus went out of his way to show compassion to people around him. You see, Jesus spent time with all kinds of people, from religious leaders to kids just like you. Jesus was patient with his friends, and he was compassionate with crowds. When Jesus was making his last journey to Jerusalem, he knew what was about to happen. He was about to die on the cross for the sins of the world. But even though Jesus knew all that was about to come, he still took the time to care for people that he met along the way. I think you'll find he is the ultimate friend. We'll hear that in just a minute, but first, let's watch this. What do you do when you need something? If you're thirsty, you take a drink. When you're bored, maybe you pick up a good book. If you're cold, you grab a sweater. <laughs> Lonely, you hang out with a friend. And if you're hungry, you pick up your favorite snack. It's really easy to do something about your own needs because you can't escape them. <laughs> they follow you around like a shadow. It's a lot more difficult to pay attention to what other people need. You have to focus your eyes and your heart. And when you begin to see the needs around you, then you can take action. Maybe you see your mom is stressed after a long day of work. So load the dishwasher, even if it's not your turn. Spot a new kid in the cafeteria? Offer a seat at your table. You see your little brother really struggling with math? Take a few minutes out of your game to help him. The lady who drives your bus seems really sad. Thank her for being on time to pick you up every day. The weeds in your neighbor's flower bed get out of control while she's on a trip. So pull some weeds for her. <laughs> when you begin to focus your eyes and your heart to see the needs around you and do something about them, others will see God at work in you. That's why compassion is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hey, RPK, our basic truth today is I should treat others the way I want to be treated. You know, he loves us more than we can ever even contain. So let's sing, give it away. Come on, get on your feet. Are you feeling good? Mm-hmm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. I can't keep this in, gotta let it out. I'm gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me around and around. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away.
right, you guys. Our bottom line today is make time to help others. It's like you got to write it in your schedule. You know what I'm saying? It's that important. Make time to help others. And when we say yes to Jesus, when we tell him that we are all in, well, he shows us exactly what we should do. Are you ready to follow him? Come on, let's do it. You know this song. It's called I'm All In. Tell me to wave my hands up in the air. Come on, get your hands up there. Push out loud like no one else is there. You can tell me to start up high and twist it down. Here we go, now jump up and spin around. Let's pray to that amazing God that we're saying, I'm all into you today, God. We are saying, I'll follow you wherever you lead. And I'm going to make time to help others. Thank you, Lord, that you have shown us compassion in so many ways every single day. And you will never, ever stop showing your compassion to us. And we just continue to ask you this month as we have been learning more and more how we should be seeking out others and their needs and meeting their needs. Help us this week to make time to help others. We're just grateful for what you have given us, for what you have done for us, and we want to make sure that we pass that on as you have instructed us to do. We love you so much, and we just can't say thank you to you enough. So today, we just want to worship you with all that we do. And it's in your name that we pray today. Amen. It's a busy day today. Don't believe me? Check out my block. Oh, take a look at all this hustle and bustle. These people could use some compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. But who has time for compassion when you're so busy all the time? I mean, it's the same every day. Get up, get dressed, pop dart for breakfast, school, lunch, more school. Then there's homework. 
video games, a few selfies, dinner, music practice, and bed. And then the alarm goes off and you start all over again. It's not just you that's busy. People are busy everywhere you look. Moms and dads, shh. Business people, buy all the things. Servers, you have the iced tea with no lemon, with lemonade with no ice. You have a cup of ice with no tea, a slice of lemon, right? It can seem like there's not enough time to show compassion. But as you'll see with Jesus in today's story, sometimes you have to make time. Pop-tart me. Yeah. <laughs> see you in a few. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 10. Verses 46 through 52. Jesus spent time with people of every kind from every background. He answered trick challenges from important religious leaders and sincere questions from rich men. Sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor, then come follow me. Jesus didn't hesitate to welcome kids. Let the little children come to me. He was endlessly patient with his own friends when they argued about who should be first. The Son of Man did not come to be served. Instead, he came to serve others. Even as Jesus made his last journey to Jerusalem, he didn't let what was ahead distract him from the people he met along the way. Uh, hey Jesus, this crowd we picked up in Jericho is really slowing us down. I wanna pick up the pace. But Jesus didn't try to shake off the crowds that followed him. It's Jesus. Jesus. A short way ahead, a man named Bartimaeus sat by the road on a torn and dusty mat. He stretched out his arms desperately, hoping someone would drop a few coins in his empty hand. Please help me. Bartimaeus was blind. There was no work he could do to earn money, so he depended on the kindness of strangers passing by. The crowd quickly surrounded him. He's right there! Look it's him, I see Jesus! Jesus. I, I, I swear I see him over there. Jesus? Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus. He'd heard stories of sick people who'd been healed by Jesus, and in his heart, he believed they were true. Jesus! Bartimaeus knew he couldn't let this chance slip away. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, be quiet. Jesus probably doesn't have any time for you. Son of David, have mercy on me. Let it go, Jesus! Through all the noise and clamor, Jesus heard Bartimaeus' plea. It would have been easy to keep walking, to push on towards Jerusalem, but instead, Jesus stopped. Call for him. What? What's happening? Cheer up! On your feet! Bless your heart, Jesus is actually calling for you! Me? He, he heard me! Bartimaeus jumped up, tossing aside his dusty coat. He staggered towards the voice he'd heard. Hands in the crowd helped him to find his way. Jesus! What do you want me to do for you? Teacher! Teacher! I want to be able to see! Jesus smiled as he looked directly into Bartimaeus' unseeing eyes. Go, your faith has healed you. Bartimaeus blinked and blinked again. Bright colors and shapes flashed before his eyes, vivid and breathtaking. I, my eyes, uh, I can see. As a brand new world came into focus, Bartimaeus fixed his gaze on the face before him, the deep eyes and kind smile of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> thank you. Jesus nodded, then turned again towards Jerusalem. As the crowd began to move, Bartimaeus joined in to follow the man who had stopped for a few minutes to change his life. Jesus was very busy. He was busy teaching people and performing miracles. Crowds of people followed him wherever he went. 
So when a blind man named Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus, people told him to stop. Jesus doesn't have time to help. Somehow, through the noise of the crowd, Jesus heard Bartimaeus and made time to heal him. That means if we're followers of Jesus, sometimes we need to make time to help others. After all, there are a lot of people on our block who need help. There are people who need understanding. There are people who need space. But how can we help others when we're so busy all the time? Well, sometimes it means giving up what you want to do so you can do what someone else needs. There are only so many hours in the day. We should use at least some of that time showing compassion to the people around us who need it. That's the one thing to remember today. Make time to help others. You may not be able to help everyone, but if one person makes time to help another person, then pretty soon there's a chain reaction of compassion. And Pop-Tarts always help. You get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart. And let's not forget, you two get Pop-Tarts. See you around. It would have been easy for Jesus to skip over Bartimaeus. I mean, Jesus was really busy. People were following him around all the time and everyone wanted to hear and see what Jesus had to say, but Jesus was not too busy to show compassion. He wasn't too busy for people. And because of Jesus, Bartimaeus could see that life would never be the same again. If we want to live a life of compassion like Jesus did, we need to do this. And it's our bottom line today. Make time to help others. I guess we all need a little help from time to time. And it feels great when someone takes the time to give us a hand. That's a good reminder that we should treat others the way we want to be treated. This can be tough if we're feeling busy or overwhelmed or if we're just wrapped up in what's going on in our own lives. But it's important to show compassion as followers of Jesus. Sometimes that means giving up what we want to do so we can do what somebody else needs. Now, what does that look like exactly? What does it look like to give our time? Well, maybe it's helping your parents clean the house, or maybe it's being a good listener when a friend just needs to talk. Maybe you notice a piece of trash on the ground and instead of just walking by it, you pick it up and throw it away. There's lots of little ways to be compassionate and helpful every single day. Our memory verse for this month helps us understand what it means to show compassion. It's Micah 6, 8. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, 8. Let's say it together. Here we go. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy, and you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Let's pray and ask God to help us to do that. God, thank you for loving each one of us. Thank you for always being there for us and always showing us compassion. Help us to remember to show compassion to everyone we meet. Please help us to see when people around us are in need and just prompt us to help them. We love you so much, God, and it's in your amazing name that we pray today. Amen. I hope you all have a really great week. And remember, make time.